Yes. Glory. Keep standing for a moment. Reach over and take a hold of someone by the hand. Something I do wherever I go. You should know this by now. Grab a hand. Easy, guys. You don't have to prove you're a man. I don't know what it is with men. They always got to go. Makes them feel like they're something. I don't know. I just. Now give them a little squeeze. Another squeeze. One more. Why is that? My dad founded our ministry, Abundant Life, in uh, Margate uh, when he founded the church over 42 years ago. He started out with God is a good God, God loves you, and God's going to bless you. The first squeeze is God is a good God. The second squeeze, that God loves me. And the third squeeze is to remind myself that God is going to bless my life. See, that's who the God is that we serve. Amen. Father, we thank you for your presence, your power, and your glory that is in this house. I thank you for a supernatural release into the hearts and to the lives of every individual that's gathered in this meeting, those that are watching by way of live streaming or however they may be listening to this service. But I'm asking, Father, for your presence and power to be made known. Let us have ears to hear, eyes to see, hearts to receive. And I ask that you anoint my life one more time that I might be that vessel that your word will flow through that will cause your body of Christ to move to the next level in the kingdom. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. Let's celebrate him one more time. Praise the Lord. Praise God. You may be seated. I'm just curious, how many have never heard my ministry before? You've never been in a service with me? Is there anybody here who's never heard me before? Wow. Okay, so most of you heard me so far. It's been a good day. Uh, <laughs> we, we entered into this season, this season God spoke to us last, in fact, September, October, getting into the new year, and he spoke to me very clearly that this is a season he's going to take us beyond anything that we have ever experienced before. It was going to be a season of intimacy. It was going to be a season of, of uh, if you will, of positioning. It was going to be a season in which multiplication was going to come very quickly, and that uh, it would be a season of prosperity and increase, two separate things. Most people think they're the same, but they're not but you're going to increase in your ability to be able to influence the world in which you live. The prosperity will come from the area of which you begin to move into the area of your, your seed time and harvest. That is the time, talent, energy, as well as finance that you may be giving or sowing or doing with. You know, most people don't understand that we deal with the idea of walking in the blessing of the Lord, that it, it, it's based upon certain principles. Everything God does, and we said earlier in the, we did the ordination, is God does everything with purpose, design, and structure. There's a purpose there's a reason why. There's a design, which means that every one of us has something in us that God has put in us that causes us to do it better than anything else we could do. There's things, and that's usually our passions and our love. You know, one of the things is that I love to sing, but I'm not, I don't have the gift to sing. My wife is an incredible psalmist, songwriter, all of this. So God gave me one in my life that I can enjoy <laughs> because, I, <clears throat> I mean, I don't really like to hear myself sing in the shower, much less in church. And so I kind of sing very, you're you one of those people who sing kind of like, I can hear myself, it says under my breath, I just don't want anybody else to hear me. And so you understand, but you're gifted in certain areas. Some people are gifted in sales. Some people are gifted when it comes to math. Some people are gifted when it comes to being business people. Some people are gifted, like I said, with education. Everybody has a different gift. Some people can, can pick up a, a, a saw and a, and a, and a hammer and, and, and can build anything. Some people can, can go into the medical field and they automatically, physics and things like that just automatically comes to them. It's because it's a gift within them. See, every one of us has been gifted by God with things in us that he wants us to bring out of us so that we can produce what he has for us. So this year is that year. It's a year that God is positioning us, for, believe it or not, for 2020. Because in 2020, we're going to have the most incredible move of the Holy Spirit that the church has ever had before. I'm just telling you, but God, what God spoke to me very clearly about this year is that as he positions us that when we move into 2020, then the, the, the voice of the prophets will be heard. They've not been heard completely, but now the world's going to begin to listen to the voice of the prophets. It's amazing to me. I was talking to Brother Ted Shuttlesworth the other day, and he was telling me about some of the uh, political people that were contacting him now, wanting to know, what do you think? How do you feel? How do you feel? It's, it's fascinating because, you see, we're moving in that place that as much as it looks like the world's turning away from the church, those leaders that don't know what to do, they're going to start looking at the men of God and the women of God to find out what to do. 
We're heading into that season. But we want you to go to the book of Ephesians, chapter 3 and verse 20. It's a familiar verse that you have. And it says, now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. That's the New King James Version. The Amplified Bible says, now to him who in consequence of, it's important we see something here. He says, now him who in consequence of, and we'll deal with that in a moment, the action of his power that is at work within us. In other words, when we tell people many times, we say, you know, there's consequences to this. What do we mean by that? We mean it's going to cost you something. We mean it's going to, it's almost a negative, you know, you, you, got, you, you got the consequences of what you did. That's how we teach our children, correct? But here he's saying something quite differently. He says there's consequences of being full of power of God. That if you get full of power of God, this is the consequence of you getting God in you. I mean, it's really fascinating when you see that. He says, he says because of the consequences that it comes with you taking the Holy Spirit inside of you, you better get ready for what's about to be done. Now, that's important because as we read this verse, let's go a little bit further to Amplify it. It says this, the power that is at work within us is able to carry out his purpose. See, the power in us, the gifts in us, is so we can carry out his purpose. Not, not ask God to bless what we're doing, but say, God, what am I supposed to do that you're going to bless? See, if I can do what God's blessing, I don't have to worry about whether I'm going to be successful or not. If I, if I quit asking God to help me and I start saying, God, what do you want me to do for you? Because God has his thing all under control. Do, he, he says, for his purpose, do super abundantly far over and above all that we dare ask or think. Super abundantly over and above. Super, uh, turn to somebody next to you and say super abundantly. <laughs> now, I don't know what that means to you, but it, really what it should mean is no matter what you've got, he's going to overflow it beyond anything you can comprehend. See, we get this whole concept that my God will supply all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus, but we focus on supply my needs. But listen to the latter part, according to his riches and glory. According to his riches and glory is that when he meets your needs, he's not just going to meet it, he's going to eradicate it. See, God's not interested in a need. He's interested in getting rid of your needs. He, he said Jesus came that we might be made whole, spirit, soul, and body. He wants to have the total man, if you will. And he wants us to be what he created us to be and do what he called us to do and does not want anything in our lives that will alter that. So as we read this scripture again, as we continue to read it, we see something else here. He says that they do super abundantly far above all that we dare ask or think, infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, hopes, or dreams. In other words, our imagination can't comprehend what God's about to do. The moment you think you can think of something, God says, I've already done one better. Now, it's important to understand that because when you see a vision, understand what you see is limited. You see according to where you are. God sees according to where you're going. Oh, come on. We'll get this over here. That's a little slow over here. <laughs> see, we see where we've been and where we are. God sees where we're going. Never forget this. We talked this last year. God does not live in the past, and he doesn't live in the present. He lives in eternity. He comes back from eternity to our present to get us to where he is. God says, I don't want to go back and live with you. I want you to come live with me. He says, I'm going to prepare a place for you. I want you to be moving from glory to glory. I don't want you to stay where you are. Come on, look at somebody and say, you can't stay where you are. They let you, let you look at the church and you've got people that's been in the church for 10, 15, 20 years and they're in the same spot as they've ever been because they don't understand purpose. They don't understand design. They don't understand structure. Now, of course, we know Hosea says, my people are destroyed from lack of knowledge. A lack of what you don't know can destroy you. When we look at this word, he'll do exceedingly. The word exceedingly is over and beyond. Abundant means excessive, superior, more than necessary. Power, and I want you to get this. This is what I want to focus on today, is the power is miracle ability. It's the inerrant power residing in a thing by virtue of its nature. It's moral and excellent ability to live right before God. It's the power to influence which belongs to riches and wealth. That's called deutimus. Now, let me help you with that. That same word power there, that same word there that is to give you the ability to live right, to give you the ability to walk right, to give you the ability to influence riches and wealth is the same word that's used in Acts 1.8, and you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. What we've got in the church is a bunch of people speaking in tongues, and they think that's power. No, that's an evidence of the Holy Spirit. It is not the power of the Holy Spirit. Oh, let me take a moment on that one. 
See, we spent our lives fighting with people about speaking in tongues. But the Bible says this. Watch this. The Bible didn't say that you're going to speak in tongues and, you, and that's going to be a witness. See, your witness is they shall see your good works and glorify God. They're not going to hear your big mouth. They're going to see your good works. When they see your good works, they glorify God. Not by you running your mouth, but by you backing up what you say. You see, that's been the problem with the church is we've really not backed up what we said. You understand what I'm saying to you. You know, we, we have, a, have another story that's over in the, in, in the book of Matthew. And it's fascinating to me as, as we look at that in Matthew chapter 25. And, and it, I'm just going to refer to that for a quick moment. And uh, then I want to leave you with a couple of thoughts because our time is fleeting. And uh, I hope you'll come back later this week. We'll do some more things. Praise God. Let me just get to where I'm going with this. In, in the book of Matthew, chapter 25, we find the parable of the talents, verse 14, all the way through that passage. I'm going to just concentrate on a couple of things for you because of our time. We find that the master comes to his servants. And he says to them, I'm going to take my goods, I'm going to give you my goods, and now I want you to go take and work with that, right? That's not what he says at all. It says he gives, I want to read this to you because I want you to get this in your spirit. He says this, it says, for the kingdom of heaven, now watch, this is the kingdom of heaven, is like a man traveling in a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods, to them. And one he gave five, to another he gave two, to another he gave one, according to their own ability. Everybody say ability. And immediately he went on his journey. The word ability there in the Greek is the same word as power. It's the same word that we find in Acts 1 8. It's the, of power. You shall receive power. And the same word that you find in Ephesians that he would do exceedingly abundantly above what you ask, according to the power. In other words, what God's going to do is in you. Oh, Lord, help me here. Oh, God bless me. He can't bless you because he's already blessed you with all spiritual blessings. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. He's not going to give you something that he's already given you. He might help. What you need is an identification of what you have. You need a revelation of what you have. You need to understand there's something inside of me that God has put in me that if I'll find that purpose, I can find the success that God's called me. Because if I'm walking in purpose, God blesses my purpose. And so this year, when he's going to take you beyond, he's going to take you beyond out of something that you don't know. He's going to take you beyond by what you've learned. I said he's going to take you beyond by what you learned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you come on, you got to learn something. Hide the word of God in your heart. You want to quit sinning? Start reading the Bible. We want to get played over. We want to be cast, daily cast out. We want to go through 32 hours of counseling. We want to get in our, our, our group. And I'm not against any of that because we do all of the above. But at the end of the day, if you don't get in the Word, you're going to stay in that group for the rest of your life. You're going to stay in counseling for the rest of your life. You're going to have to go in the deliverance line every other week. But if you hide the Word of God in your heart, He says, you will not sin against me. You can't be in the Word and stay in sin. Oh, God, help me here. So it's a positioning that we have to find ourselves in so that we can fulfill what God has called us to do. And positioning is going to require something from us. We're going to have to be committed to that positioning. He says if we're in Christ, we're a new creation. All the old things pass away and all things become new. He who knew no sin was made sin that we might be made the righteous of God. He said Ephesians 2, 6, he's raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. This year, God said, I will position you for inheritance. I will position you for miracles. I will position you for influence. I will position you for blessing. I will position you if you will position yourself by the lifestyle you live. Peter walked on the water but did not want to stand next to Jesus at the cross. The 21st century church says all the right things but are not willing to get in position. We want the anointing, but we refuse to enter into the cave of Adullam under the man of God so that we can receive the anointing. We want to be healed of our leprosy, but we don't want to dip in the Jordan. We want the blessing, but we just don't want leadership. We want to escape corruption, but we don't want to hide the word of God in our heart. We want prosperity, but we refuse to be strong and of good courage. We want the windows of heaven to open, but we have a hard time with our tithe and offering. We want the Holy Spirit, but do not want the manifestation of speaking in tongues and signs and wonders. We want a shepherd, but we just don't want him to lead us. We want to be saved, but we don't want conviction and repentance. We want a church to grow, but we're not steadfast in the doctrine or the fellowship. We want Jesus as our Savior, but we certainly do not want him as our Lord. 
the church. See, you have to position yourself. I was down praying, and the Lord began to deal with me several years back. As I was studying, I was doing a teaching on the book of Acts. And I was reading in the book of Acts, I began to, especially in the first six chapters, when there was being filled with the Spirit and speaking in tongues and the churches were beginning to grow and they were reaching and going to the Gentiles. And it is, it's, it, it, the book of Acts is a fabulous book. But as I was, I was studying, I began to pray. I said, God, l- let me ask you this. I said, why did you send the Holy Spirit like that on the day of Pentecost? Why would you do, I mean, why did you pick Pen? I mean, I mean I'm kind of weird when I get stuff like that. I like to know when, where, why, what's going so I understand. Why would you pick Pentecost? The Holy Spirit just spoke to me very clearly. He says, you know, Pentecost is when they come in from their, from their harvest and they bring their offering. Yeah. He says they bring their tithe, then they give their offering for the next season. When the season even comes, they sow a seed before the next season comes. Okay? And I said, okay. He said, well, you need to understand. He says, when they come to the, to the temple, my, my temple is a house of God. It's a house of prayer. So they're coming to the temple for prayer. I said, okay. He says, they're coming with their tithe and giving me praise for what they received. So there's prayer and there's praise. I think that's pretty good. huh? He said, they, they, they are positioning themselves with prayer and praise. He says, but then they give an offering or a presentation, a seed of faith for what is to come. And he said they make that presentation, and it positions them for the new year. He said it's called prayer, praise, and presentation. I said, okay. He says anytime a people can get to a place of prayer, praise, and presentation, they enter into my presence. I release my power, and they will experience my passion. Let me say it again. When you enter in through prayer, praise, and presentation, you release the presence of God. I said, you release the presence of God. He opens the windows of heaven for revelation with tithe. With praise, he inhabits the praises of his people. So now God's presence is made known. His presence is made known. His power is released. And his passion is realized. What would happen if his tabernacle could, could experience the passion of God? Let's quit asking God to do anything. Let me just, let me have a glimpse of your passion. Let me just see something about you. Let me have an understanding of where you are rather than asking you to come where I am. And it's fascinating to me. And you've heard me tell this story before and I thought about it coming in. I thought, Lord, I've told this story there before. But when my dad was in, going through the stories of his life, and at, at the age of, of 49, he suffered his first heart attack. And at age 51, he had another heart attack. By the time he was, he was 57, he had four heart attacks. He had less than 30% of his heart that was operational. He had served God for all his life. He had pastored churches, given everything he had. All of us were raised in the church. And here he is, because of his medical condition, he's lost his house, he's lost his car, he's lost his finances, he's lost his health. And my mom has gone through cancer. She's had major your surgery, and they're living in a townhouse with their son who's a youth pastor. And I began to think about that. God, what was the deal? He said, your dad had all the right things to say, but he never positioned himself. Never positioned himself. Now watch this now. I said, God, you got to help me out. He says, your, your dad... They, they, the family has a curse on it. I said, but he's saved. He's been taken out of control of darts. He said, yes, he is. But he said, but his mind and his body, he's never understood it. Consequently, he knows spiritually he's born again. His name is in the Lamb's Book of Life. He knows his sins are forgiven. He knows he's going to heaven, but he knows nothing about anything else with the kingdom. So he took me back to where my grandfather, during the, during the, uh, uh, when, when they had the, 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 the stock market failed in 1929, my grandfather was a very wealthy man, and he, had, was, he was a contractor. He had the hospitals he was building, several hospitals. He had several schools he was building. He did a lot of things with the state. He had homes on the beach he was building. He was very wealthy. Just bought brand new cars for his house and, and, and had, a, had a group of men working for him, you know, the crews that were out working. 
But when, it, when the crash came in 29, he went to the bank and the banks were closed and he couldn't get any money and he couldn't pay his men and then he couldn't pay the other things, the obligations he had. And my grandfather lost everything. And my grandfather sat on the doorstep of their house. My dad said he came around and saw my grandfather sitting on the step and he was crying and he's weeping. And, my, and my, my, my father said to him, he says, what's wrong, dad? He said, I went to the bank. He says, the stock market has crashed. We've lost everything. Watch this now. And we're never going to get it back. And that's when the Holy Spirit spoke to me about it. I said, that's where the generational curse came on your family for, power, for finances. And I'm going, but wait a minute. My dad's born again. He said, it doesn't matter if he's born again because if he doesn't have a knowledge of what is, he can never have what will be. If you don't have a knowledge of what is, you can never ha have what will be. Consequently, I began to talk to my dad about it. And we began to talk, pray about it. And we, we, we begin to take authority over that curse. Now, I'm going to say something that's going to mess some of you up a little bit, but don't you stay with me a minute. You can take authority over a curse, but if you don't get into prayer, praise, and presentation, that curse is not going to go anywhere. Because your prayer, praise, and presentation means I'm leaving the past behind. You, you understand what I'm saying? I'm not going to be in that anymore. I'm not going to live that way anymore. You see, it's a familiarity. It's not familiar spiritually to you. It's familiar to your mind and to your flesh. And so that's where you've got to be led by the spirit and not by the flesh. You've got to bring your body into subjection. You've got to tear down imaginations. You've got to stay focused on where God's taking you. And the only way you can do that is when you begin to move into that place where you're talking to God, you're praising God, and you're walking with an offering because everything God does is with seed time and harvest. God created heavens and the earth with what? His word. What's his word? His word's a seed. You've heard me teach that. God brought salvation to mankind. How? He gave his only begotten son. Who's his son? Incorruptible seed. Word of God. Couldn't create without seed. Couldn't get you saved without seed. How's he going to sustain the earth? As long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest. This rich ruler gave, master gave his five, four, or five, two, and one. What happened? He comes back and he reckons with them. The one with the five multiplied it. Guess what he said? Well done. Enter into my joy. Oh, some of you going to get this in a minute. See, if you're not fruit bearing, you're not bringing glory to God. Genesis 15 says this, uh, 15 and 8 says that, that when we bear fruit, it glorifies God. People see our good works, which means success, it glorifies God. God gets glorified when you produce fruit. You can't produce fruit without prayer, praise, and presentation. It doesn't happen in your life. It'll never happen to you. But the moment you begin to develop the lifestyle, and so I remember my dad, when we prayed over my dad, we broke that spirit off of him. He went to a meeting. He got healed immediately. It was in a matter of a few weeks he got healed. He had an experience with God. God spoke to him uh, about a situation. He says, I want you to go back and start the church. I want you to get back in position now. My dad said, you don't understand. We've lost everything. I've gone through all of this. I've gone through all of this sickness. I've gone through all of this. My wife has gone through all this. Now, I know you've healed us, but we're still living in a townhouse with my son. We still don't have a home. We still don't have a car. We still don't have any money. We still don't have it. I know we're healed and I know we're saved, but there's something missing. Oh, come on, tell somebody, you want the whole thing. So God spoke to my dad and said, I want you to start abundant life. My dad went to a place, one of these loan people that they have in these storefronts at high interest, but they loaned him $1,000 on his signature. It took the first payment out before he left. You know how that goes. And he took that $1,000 and he said, you know what? I've got the prayer right. I praise him for my healing. And now I'm about to make a presentation with the only thing I have that I, can, I, can, that I have the ability that has value. And he started the church with $990. Funny, isn't it? Curse is broken. You can be healed in your body. But you're not going to walk away from that curse until you start making a presentation. Oh, I don't know about that. Okay, let's go, to, let's go to the book of Genesis, chapter 15. Let's look at Abraham. He's fussing at God. This child, the, I, I don't have an heir. God says, where's your heir? He says, you know I don't have an heir. 
Let one of the servants of my house be the heir. God said, absolutely not. Come out here and look at the stars, son. He looked at the stars. And he said, God said, can you count the stars? He said, no, I can't. He said, so say your seed be. So now he began to believe God. Now watch this. He believed God. He wasn't believing God. He's believing God. And God counted him for righteousness, being right with him. Pretty good deal, isn't it? I'm in the presence of God. I've been talking to God. That's prayer. I'm in the presence of God. We're communicating. This is awesome. But then two verses later in chapter 15, he comes to God. He says, now, God, I know that I'm in your presence. I know, I, I, I know that, that we've been talking. We've been praying. I've been praying. You've been talking to me. He says, but how do I know this is going to happen? He says, build me an altar and give me an, build an altar and give me an offering. Go back and read it, chapter 15, book of Genesis. Build me an altar and give me an altar. You know why? Because I don't care how much you're in the presence of God, and I don't, I don't care how much you talk to God. If you're not understanding faith without works is dead, then you're in trouble. And if you don't understand the nature of God in the book of Mark chapter 4, verse 26, such is the kingdom of God if a man should scatter seed. If a man should scatter seed. Such is the kingdom of God. Such is the sovereign will of God if a man should scatter seed. Such is the kingdom of God. A man, the master gave to, his, his ta- gave to the people ability. That which they already had the ability to do, he gave them their, the talents based upon what they were capable of doing. But then he came back and he said, I want to see the multiplication. When he came back to the one with five, he said, well done, enter in, thou good and faithful servant. He multiplied. He went to two, well done, thou good and faithful servant, enter the joy of the Lord, to the joy of the Lord. See, the way you're going to get some joy in your life is beginning to multiply. He got to the one with the one. He said, I didn't do anything. I put it in the dirt, hit it. Here it is. He says, you know what you are? You're a wicked servant. One translation, he calls him an evil servant. One translation says, you're ineffective. You're an ineffective servant. You have no relevancy to me. You have no ability. Watch this there. You have no ability to influence anyone. If we're going to change horse head, we're going to have to be in a place, a, a position that we can influence people. Yep. And the only way we can influence people, we can have the greatest services in the world. We can be in the presence of God and the glory cloud can fill this place. But until we start sowing our seed and start believing God for the supernatural manifestation, you're never going to see the fruit that God wants you to have. You're going to hear about it. You're going to talk about it. You're going to feel it, but you're never going to have it for yourself. And I learned a long time ago, I want you to get yours, but bless God, I'm going to get mine. Amen. Why? Because I love my neighbors and I love myself. If I don't learn to take care of me, my neighbor's in big trouble. And the way I take care of me is through prayer, praise, and presentation. The way I fight my battles is through prayer, praise, and presentation. The way I take the enemy down is through prayer, praise, and presentation. The way I'm going to defeat the enemy on every place I come in contact with. I don't care whether it's sickness. I don't care if it's it's finances. I don't care if it's family. I'm always looking, what seed can I sow that I can come before God and I can can pray and I can praise him and I can sow a seed because a seed of time, talent, energy, and finance can change the whole world. My wife and I, we had, musicians, please come. We're going to close. My wife and I, we had a situation in our church that a man had done some things. He was going to a legal thing for over seven years. A lot of money, million, six hundred thousand. The man had embezzled. We didn't know what to do. We'd spent 400,000 in legal fees. Church just couldn't go any further. I'm down praying. God says, what didn't you remember what I told you? Prayer, praise, and presentation. You, you thank me for deliverance. You pray to me all the time. We talk all the time. He says, here's what I want you to do at New Year's Eve. I want you to sow a $25,000 seed. I said, God. He says, go to your retirement. You got it in your retirement. Take it out. Sow a $25,000 seed. Watch what I can do with the $25,000. You spent four hundred dollars of the church's money on your own. Now watch what I'll do with your money with me doing it. Sowed the seed. The first week of of January, the man calls us up. He says, you know what? I'm tired of fighting this thing. I know I'm guilty. I'm willing to plead guilty. They got no money yet, but he's willing to plead guilty. He got 13 counts. 17 years he's in jail before he's up for any kind of parole. He had the bank call me up that was involved and said, listen, we don't want to deal with this anymore. Will you take an $850,000 settlement towards this? I'll take it. This is all in a matter of four days. Six days later, I get a guy call me up. Will you go to lunch with me? Sure. 
We go to lunch. He sits there. says, you know, we don't live here anymore. We moved away. But you're the one that prophesied to me. God bless my wife and I. You're the one that prayed us through. We just sold our company for $80 million. And he took and he pushed a check across the thing. He says, of course, we go to another church in another town. We've got to take care of our tithe up there. But he says, I can never forget what you did. And he pushed a check, $560,000 across the table. Had another man call me up. He says, you know, we got this charitable account in our business, and this is crazy. God spoke to me. He said, give it to the pastor. He, he, he knows I want to do it better than you do. Had another man call me up, $100,000. In, in less than nine days, we had $1,700,000 in the bank. I'm not just talking stuff. I got Minister Reese up here. He can verify these things. Prayer, praise, but here's the deal. The presentation has to be out of you. See, Dad had to take the seat out. He had to go take what he had. Kath and I couldn't use the church money. We had to take our retirement money. That's hard sometimes. Prayer, praise presentation that's how I fight my battle you want to you, you want to come after me go right ahead but you can't defeat me because what's in me is going to come out of me it's the glory of God it's seemingly abundant what I should think why because I live a life of prayer praise and presentation I raised my children that way I've now raised my grandchildren that way they'll come to me it's so funny because I I don't carry dollar bills with me be careful because some people take it the wrong way. I came to a conclusion back in the early 2000s, 2003, that one dollar bill never met a need that I met, that I had. I'm not talking about Cokes and sodas. I'm talking about it didn't meet a need. So I said, Lord, I'm going to trust you and I'm never going to I'm never going to keep a dollar bill. So I take them, so I get changed all the bills, I just put it aside so my grandkids come in, I give it to them. And they love it. Because any given week, it could be 20, 30, $1 bills to those three kids. Man, they're out there dividing up. Who's what? But here's the funny part about it. Because they've been taught that, and I'll say to them, and I'll, like last, this, this past week, I gave them each five $1 bills. Each, 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 it was $15 I had. I gave them each one five. I said, what are y'all going to do with it? Michael Cash says, well, I'm going to give three to Jesus, and I'm going to keep two. I said, you, you, you can just pay your tithe, Michael. He said, oh, no, no, no. He says, I've learned. He says, if I honor Jesus before I honor me, he's not eight years old. Prayer, praise, and presentation, Poppy. I know, I know how to move the hand of God. I know how to enter in the presence of God. I know how to release the power of God. I know how to walk in the passion of God through prayer, praise, and pre presentation. See, I don't care how many have had the curse broken off of your life. Until you begin to position yourself. Everybody say position. So you got to position yourself. Those that are willing, the successful people are willing to do what the, diff, uh, the difficult, while the unsuccessful people won't do the difficult. The people who know how to walk in the presence of God will do what the people won't do that are not in His presence. That's the reason you can sit in service and somebody's getting blessed and you're going, I don't feel nothing. You know why? Because you need to examine your prayer, praise, and presentation. I, every, every service I go to, I made up my mind, I will never go to a service in my life that I'm not presenting an offering. I tithe at home. But wherever I go, everywhere, every, every recent day he travels with me, everywhere I'm at, I, I don't care if they take up an offering, I'm giving. You know why? Because I want the fullness of what God has for me. I don't want to live in the past. I don't want to be incarcerated in the present. I want to continue having God move me to eternity where he's at. And the only way I know to do that is with, there is no eternity without the sowing of a seed. Prayer, praise, and praise. He said, what are you saying this to me? It's time. Listen, you've been taught the curse is broken off of you. All right? But how many of us are not living like the curse is broken? Come on, stay with me, folks. 
How many are living like it's not? Had a little lady come to me. She's about 34 years old, single mom. She comes to me. She says, uh, the bank's going to be, I'm going to be losing my house. And I don't know what to do. She says, I've been trying to put some money together. And, and they said that I, I don't have enough money because they need, like she's like three months behind and in, in taxes and stuff like that. And she says, I have $6,600, but they said it's not enough. And they won't take just a partial thing. I, I've got to do it all or they're going to take my house. I said, okay, what do you want to do? She pulled it out. She took an envelope. She put that $6,600 in it. She said, I want you to pray over this thing because I want to do what you've been preaching. And I'm looking around. I got, I got people in my office. I'm like, oh, God. Nothing worse than a pastor taken from a 30, 30-some-year-old young African-American woman, single mom, who's losing her home and taking her last $6,600. Well, that plays well in the papers, doesn't it? I said, you, you don't want to do that. She says, you don't understand. I don't have a choice. I said, okay. So I took it and put it in her hands. We prayed over it. The power of God just filled that room. And I, the spirit of prophecy came over me, and I began to prophesy to her. And I said, you will not lose this house. Not only will you not lose a house, but you will have that house debt-free within a year. And I'm thinking, what are you saying, you dummy? That's my head speaking. You know what I'm saying? Because it's coming out, and I'm going. So we finished. Tears running out of her face. I mean, the power of God filled that room. It was so precious. The Holy Spirit then says, now hand it back to her and tell her it's an Isaac offering. I gave it back to her. She said, I said, no, you got to. I told her what it was. She left. God gave her an idea on her co- in her company you know, that she worked for. She went to her CFO and he said, listen, it's not just for our company. It's for, listen, why don't you take and, 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 and trademark that thing? He says, and I'll tell you who to go to and, hey, and you can sell it to these Fortune 500 companies. One year from the day that she brought the presentation, she had now released her Thank to all her idea, all of these fortune bought, sold it to them, did contracts with them. She made her first million dollars in less than a year. Now here's the thing: the bank contacted her and said, "There's been some paperwork mistakes. We can't really find everything to do with your stuff. The bank that loaned you the money that bought the bank that we bought that bank, we can't find it." She went to the judge, and the judge said, gave the bank 60 days to come up with the information. They didn't. The judge said, your house, free and clear. It's time to position ourselves. And we are going to take up an offering this morning. You know me. I don't preach this and don't practice it. But I want you, before you do anything, I want you to think about what is that area that has been stalemate in your life? You want God coming back from eternity in your present circumstance to take you into his eternity with him. You want to move from one level to the next level. I don't want, you can't buy this. You're not buying it. It's an act of faith. Please, God, help us to understand this. I, I could not buy the miracles. It's an act of faith. It's what, and why, why is it money? People don't say, why is it money? Because that's what moves you. If I said, if you go home and stand on your head, even though you can't, you go home and try it. Because it, it's no big deal. But the moment that you've got to take something that costs you, it's going, to, it's going to take something out of your life that if God doesn't do something, you're in trouble. You know, to me, it's like when I go overseas and I have people come up in wheelchairs and, and they want me to pray for them because they already told everybody we're having a healing thing. I know the moment I step off that platform and lay hands on them, they better get in that wheelchair. But I've got to get off that platform. I've got to get out of my comfort zone and go down there so something can happen. And unfortunately, in the United States, the only thing that makes things happen in the United States is when you're willing to reach in your pocket because money's become the God of this world in the United States. And what we're saying is you're no longer, what you're saying with this is you're no longer my God. I'm going to give it to my God.
You've got to take authority over the strong man. And that's why prayer, praise, and presentation is so important. I challenge you, after we leave here today, after I'm gone six months from now, everything you face, go to the place of prayer, praise, and ask God, what is the presentation I need to make? He will have a seed for you to sow every time. It might be your time. It might be your talent. It might be your finances. He might have you go somewhere. He might have you talk to But What is he doing? You're positioning yourself. And the reason we're going to do an offering today is an act of faith positioning ourselves. We're going to position ourselves that God, and, and I found out a long time ago that we, what we found with that, that, what we did, my wife and I, what my dad did, we had to do something that cost us something. Because without it, it's not in faith. I know this sounds crazy, but standing in Columbia, taking up an offering for the church there, and building a new church, helping them raise the money. The pastor asked me to challenge them about it. I was doing it. I said, I'm going to give $1,000 to the Holy Spirit starts laughing at me and says, that won't move you and it's not going to move me. So I come back to the congregation. I said, okay, I'm going to give $2,000. I'm in Columbia. That's not my church. I'm visiting. I'm a guest speaker. The Holy Spirit says, won't move me, won't move you. So I said, okay, I'll give $5,000. The Holy Spirit not going to work. So I stepped back. I said, Pray, lead some worship. You know, let's, let's, get, let's think about what we want to give. I'm back there praying. The Holy Spirit says, give them $10,000 and I'll show you what I'll do. So I sold the $10,000. See, I've been, I've been seeking. I, I needed some answers in church growth. I've been going all over the world researching all the things and doing everything. Just never found something that worked. I walked off the platform. This church is a church that in seven years went from zero to 27,000 people. Walked in, walked into the green room, walked in, sat down. The pastor sat down next to me. He says, you know, I don't understand it, but doing that offering, God spoke to me. I'm supposed to mentor you in church growth. Pretty cheap seed for what God's done for us. We were in a property on 1490 Banks Road. Now we're over on Royal Palm Boulevard. We were in a storefront. Now we're in one of the most prestigious churches in the whole city. We're in a place that nobody knew us. Now we're in a place that everybody knows who we are. Pretty cheap seed, wasn't it? But it cost me something. But once I sowed it, it didn't mean anything. So I want you to hand out the envelopes, if you would, please.